In this video, we are gonna take a look at some brand new features in the March 2021 update to Adobe Photoshop. My name is Matt Kluskowski. Welcome to the latest video. Uh, all of these updates are actually in Adobe Camera Raw, but we're just gonna dive right in. One of them, the first one we're gonna cover, I think you're gonna absolutely love. If you ever have to do a heavy crop on a photo or you ever have to do a big print, um, I think I think you're gonna, you're gonna dig this change. So uh, let's go ahead here. I'll dive into and share my screen with you. So the first one is gonna be in, in, in camera, they're all in camera raw, but the first one, there's a couple of little tricks to this one, which is you have to be, you have to open up a raw photo, all right? And I'll, I'll show you where it is and I'll explain different ways you can get to this. Um, you have to open up a raw photo. There's a little film strip icon down here in Adobe Camera Raw and I'm using Camera Raw 13.2. So this is the latest version and by the way, jump back over to the screen for you. By the way, if you're not seeing these updates, I had to reboot my computer before I saw the option to update. So I even shut down Photoshop and started it again and I didn't see it. I actually had to reboot the computer and when I did that, I was able to see the update. So just keep that in mind. All right, so back over to the screen here. If you have your film strip open and you right click on the photo, you can see an option for enhance. And then the other place that you'll see it, because I don't, typically don't open the film strip, is over on the right hand side underneath all the tools. There's three little dots over there and you can go down and click on the word enhance there. Now, there's a little trick to this, okay? It's just gonna work on your raw DNG files. However, if you were to open up Adobe Bridge and you were to click on a JPEG file and go file, open in camera raw from there, which is essentially just forcing a JPEG to open in camera raw. It doesn't make it a raw photo. Um, the, the, the changes will still be non-destructive, but it, you, still, you don't have the quality of a raw photo there. Um, you can get to it. You can use enhanced details. However, if you were in Photoshop and you went to the filter menu and went down to the camera raw filter with a JPEG, you're, you're not, or even a, a photo that you'd opened into Photoshop, you're not gonna see uh, the option for enhance if you go through the camera raw filter. And there's some way, other way under the file open menu in Photoshop, it's just, that's a, it's a weird way. I'm not even gonna talk about it. But anyway, when, when we come in here and we go over to enhance, enhance details, this is where this came from, all right? It used to be called enhanced details and this has been around for a couple of years. And what it was mainly for was certain cameras and their raw files and some artifacting that was created from that, okay? Typically not something most people, 99% of people didn't need to use, but the 1% that needed it really needed it. Well, they went in here and they added super resolution. So what it does is it's actually, you can read it down there, doubles image resolution ideal for large displays and prints. You'll see various things out there that say 4X, right? I believe when it comes to megapixels, it's technically four times, but uh, please don't give me a lecture on math and all that stuff, I'm fine with it. Uh, all I know is it works, okay? So you check this little box and it even tells you once you click enhance, it's gonna take about 15 seconds to run, but you can see a preview here to see if you even wanna do it. Click on it, that's your before, let go, that's your after. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna click enhance and let it run. And while it's running, I will come back over to you guys and kindly ask that you subscribe to my YouTube channel here. So my statistics show that about 75% of people that watch are actually not subscribed. So I would really appreciate it, it helps me out. Um, and, uh, and also if you hit the, the notification icon on there, that way you get a notification when I post a new video, I only do uh, you know, one or two videos a week. Uh, and if you have any photography groups or anything like that, I would be uh, greatly appreciative if you would share it with them as well, so thank you. All right, let's go back over. It should be done running now. And again, I'd have to go down to the film strip to see it down here, but you can see uh, I've got my original raw file and then the enhanced super resolution image right next to it, which will be larger. So here's what I did so we can really compare this. I went over and I opened up the original raw file. And what I did is I made it the exact same size using image image size, which is typically the way most people that use Photoshop upsize their photos. Yes, there's plugins. If you like to use them, great. If you don't, you still got excellent results right here inside of Photoshop. So it doesn't really matter, whatever works for you. But I went in here, this is the way I always did my upsizing, uh, image, image size, and I just upsized it to the same size as the super resolution version. And I pasted them on top of each other. You can see it over here in the layers panel. So we're gonna zoom in and pixel peep. We should never, never judge your photo at 200% because you'll never be happy. But I'm gonna zoom in to 200% here. 
And I'm going to say, this is the old way. This is the new way. Old, new. Let's pan around the photo here and see if we can find some other places. All right. Old, new. Let's, again, I'll pan around a little bit just to get some different. There we go. That should be a pretty good crispy spot. Old, new. You can definitely see it. So pretty cool stuff. I went and did it with the wildlife photo. So this, I actually got this. Uh, this was my taken with my Sony Alpha 1. Uh, I was going out and testing the bird eye autofocus. So I went in here. Again, this is old. This is new. Old, new. So every bit as sharp in the new version and just tends to remove a lot more of those little artifacts that we have in the background there. So technically, yeah, there's still a little bit of noise in it. Yeah, but that, that's not noise. If you think that's noise, you probably pixel peep too much. That's not noise. Uh, it would never show up if I posted it online. And if I printed it, that would smooth out in the print in a heartbeat. So I, I would never consider any more noise reduction on anything like that. All right, let's continue on down the line here, get back into camera raw, show you the rest of the features. If you do have your film strip open, you'll see a little icon right next to it. This isn't a feature I would use, but you can sort by different things. This would be mainly if you were coming from Adobe Bridge and you had done uh, some flagging and rating and whatnot to your photos, you can sort uh, anything. And if you were opening multiple photos into camera raw, again, I typically don't because I use Lightroom, but you can see there's some sorting options down here. Uh, another big one that you might like if you do use Camera Raw a lot, go over to your panels on the right and right click on the name of any one of them and you'll see edit panels to show. It's gonna open up a little window right here where you can turn panels off and on if you don't you know, use them. So I, I personally don't use calibration so I could turn it off. Um, but then you can also rearrange them so you can click on the name of a panel, hit the up arrow key to move it up Hit the right or the down arrow key to move it down in the list and click OK. And of course, you could go in there and reset everything to their default order if you wanted to do that. Um, and then the last feature is uh, really, it's nothing I'm really going to demonstrate on there. Uh, if you have an Apple phone and you shoot in the Apple Pro Raw format and you were to take one of those photos onto your computer and open them up, it would open in Camera Raw. They now have a profile for that inside of there as well. So it'll give you more of the in-camera look. And the, the last thing, of course, is camera updates and things, which normally don't affect me. But when they do affect me, I talk about them longer. So um, I literally got my Sony A1 the day yesterday, and Photoshop came out with the update yesterday, which supports the new Sony Alpha 1. So just uncanny timing there because I was not looking forward to shooting everything in JPEG or dealing with the DNG converter or anything like that. So just perfect timing on that one there, which tells us, so the next question is what about Lightroom? Well, we know that Camera Raw and Lightroom's develop module stay on par with each other. So you can't imagine that it's gonna to be too long where we're gonna have an update to Camera Raw and we're not gonna get an update to Lightroom. So I would assume that's probably gonna come very, very quickly. So hope you guys enjoyed that. As I mentioned before, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it and also share it with your uh, friends or any photography groups that you're in. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.